I am sure you have all been to the dentist for either a regular dental check or for a dental problem. During the visit, a radiograph is taken to have an overall view of the teeth and supporting structures. The most commonly taken radiograph is the OPG. In today's video, let us discuss a few concepts about this imaging modality. Pop quiz OPG is short for orthopantomogram or orthopantomograph. Ortho means to align because teeth in a horseshoe-shaped jaw align in one plane. Pan means a wide view since the OPG gives us a complete view of both arches. Tomo means slices as the process of capturing the image involves multiple points of exposure, creating slices of the arches which later combine to form the final image. The term gram or graph refers to the action of writing or recording. Let us move on to the principles of panoramic imaging. How can we capture an image that shows all the teeth in a single plane? To answer this, let me guide you through a step-by-step -step process to understand the principle based on which the panoramic machine works. Let us assume that a radiograph of objects A, B and C on a disc has to be recorded. We have the X-ray source fixed at a specific point and the receptor fixed on the other side of the disc. A collimator is placed in front of the receptor. When object A is in the path of the X-ray beam, an image of object A is formed on the receptor. But is that the only image we want? No, we require a panoramic image to cover multiple objects A, B and C. To achieve this, I rotate the disc in a clockwise direction. Now the X-rays emitted from one side pass through the disc, get collimated and reach a particular end of the image receptor, ensuring that images A, B and C are captured. But do you notice the flaw here? All images are registered on one point of the film receptor, resulting in an overlap rather than appearing separately. Therefore, to solve this problem, let us move the image receptor linearly in the same direction and same speed as the rotating disc, keeping the collimator and the X-ray source steady. Now the disc moves in a clockwise direction and the receptor also moves in the same direction and at the same rate as the disc. X-rays pass through the center of rotation and get attenuated at an object A to form the image at a point on the receptor. Similarly, the image of object B forms at another point on the film receptor. Because the disc rotates in the same direction as the image receptor, all the images are sharp and clear without overlaps. An important point to be noted here is that the source to object distance is long and the object to receptor distance is short. With this, image magnification and unsharpness are minimized. Since the source to object distance and the object to receptor distance remain constant during rotation. Objects A, B and C get equally magnified. What about objects D, E and F? Upon careful observation, you will notice these objects move in the opposite direction of the image receptor and are on the opposite side of the disc. As a result, a reversed shadow of D, E and F appears on the radiograph Due to their proximity to the X-ray source, these structures become significantly magnified, leading to blurring and marked unsharpness, making it obscure on the final image. Using this principle, let us now assume the disc is replaced by a patient. Would a dentist ask the patient to rotate around his axis to get a radiograph? Well, no. Instead, the X-ray source revolves in one particular direction while the disc remains steady. As we know, the receptor moves independently of the collimator and the receptor collimator unit does not rotate as a whole. This means to capture images of A, B and C, the receptor collimator unit should rotate around the disc in the same direction as that of the X-ray source. Let us review the moving components of the machines. 
Feel free to take a screenshot. Moving on. As the X-ray source and receptor collimator unit rotate around the disc, it captures the side opposite to the source. Now imagine the mandible in place of the disc and points A, B, C, D, E and F representing specific locations on it. Applying the same principle, this rotational movement helps us capture the desired image. Let us now discuss the center of rotation. While we studied the working principle of the panoramic machine, we noticed that the center of rotation remained fixed. But contemporary machines use a continuous moving center of rotation. Let us see how this is possible. If X-ray exposure begins from the left side of the arch, starting from the condyle and extending diagonally opposite, the center of rotation would be located on the posterior lingual aspect of the right side of the mandible. As the X-ray source rotates, the center of rotation shifts along the shape of the arch. During exposure of the left part of the jaw, multiple center of rotations form along the right lingual side until the symphysis of the mandible. As the source moves towards the left side, exposing the right side of the arch, multiple centers of rotation form along the lingual anterior aspect of the left side till the posterior aspect. After completing its rotation, a panoramic image is captured. The area through which the X-rays pass to create the image required is called the image layer or the focal trough. Let's discuss this further. The focal trough is an imaginary zone formed when the X-ray source and the receptor collimator unit rotate around the patient. If it is imaginary, why do you think it is important? It's because all the structures within the focal trough are clearly obtained. Therefore, the closer the structures are to the focal trough, the sharper they appear. Let us now discuss the types of images formed on the OPG which are of three types, real image, double image, and ghost image. Formation of these images depends on the position of the structures within the rotational parts of the X-ray source and the receptor collimator unit. First, let us see what real images are. All the objects between the center of rotation and the receptor form real images. Objects A, B, and C would come under this category. Now, if you think about it, the focal trough would also form between the center of rotation and the receptor. Therefore, we can now conclude that all the structures that come within the focal trough form real images on the radiograph. Remember that the objects outside the focal trough, but between the center of rotation for unsharp real images. Moving on to double images. As the word suggests, an image is formed on the radiograph twice. Here's why. If the X-ray intercepts the structure twice during its rotation, then the image appears twice on the film. Therefore, all the objects posterior to the arc of the center of rotation, such as the vertebrae, hyoid bone, pharyngeal airway, and the epiglottis, form double images. Let us now move on to ghost images. These images are produced by objects between the center of rotation and the X-ray source. They appear on the opposite side of their true anatomic location. This occurs because when the X-ray source focuses on the opposite side of the mandible, some amount of X-rays pass through the mandible on the same side of the source. That particular part appears magnified on the contralateral side of the image. It is also seen at a higher level because of the upward inclination of the X-ray beam. These structures are outside the focal trough and close to the X-ray source, adding to the blur and magnification. Structures that form the ghost images are the hyoid bone, vertebrae, ramus of the mandible, and metal artifacts like earrings. This brings us to the end of our video on the concepts of the principle of panoramic imaging, focal trough, center of rotation, real image, double image, and ghost images. We hope you had fun learning with us.